everyone. Welcome to Cathedral Kids. I'm Miss Lisa and I'm going to be doing today's lesson for you. I wanted to show you a couple things when we're getting started and maybe you can have an idea what we're going to talk about. Okay, so I have this. It's a seashell, right? I found it at Folly Beach. Let's see what else I have over here. Oh, it's a little bit of a sand dollar. Hmm. Maybe it's something to do with the ocean or, ooh, here's a cool thing. What that is? It's a shark's tooth. Pretty cool, huh? So do you know what we're talking about today? We're not talking about shark's teeth, unfortunately. We're going to talk about sand. Okay, so think about when you go to the ocean and you walk on the sand or the beach, think about how that sand feels underneath your toes. It's kind of squishy, feels kind of cool. You can build a sand castle, you can pick it up and let it run through your fingers. You can squish it, you can dig with it, all sorts of things, right? Really fun, but think about it. If you had to build something on top of it, do you think it would stay very well? Hmm? Or do you think it might just fall over? Okay, so you think about that while I read today's lesson. Um, we are in the Marty McCoskey Gospel Story Bible, and we are on page 191, The Wise and Foolish Builders. Okay, so here's the picture. And I'll read this to you now. This is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 27. Near the end of his teaching on the mountain, Jesus told stories called parables and used word pictures that would help people remember what he said. For example, Jesus said that false prophets, people who didn't tell the truth about God, were like wolves who try to sneak their way into God's flock of sheep. They dress up like sheep, so they look like sheep on the outside, but inside they are wolves who want to attack the sheep and kill them. Jesus used another word picture to explain how God's people could recognize these wolves. Jesus said that every tree bears its own special kind of fruit. If you have an apple tree, you get apples, but you won't get apples from a grapevine. If you have a healthy tree, you'll get good fruit, but the fruit from a diseased tree will be bad. If you see a tree and don't know what kind it is, you can look at its fruit and you will know. And you'll be able to tell if the fruit is good or bad. People don't bear fruit like trees, of course. But Jesus was saying you can tell a lot about people by their fruit, the things they do and say. If a person tells you he is a Christian, but he does things that are sinful, he may not be a Christian at all. Just because someone says he is a Christian doesn't mean God has changed him on the inside in his heart. That's why we compare the words someone says with the fruit of his life, his words and actions. Jesus also taught a parable about two builders. He said, everyone who hears my words and obeys them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. When the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it did not fall because it had been built on the rock. But a man who does not obey my teaching it's like a man who builds his house on sand. When the wind and rains came, come to his house, the water will carry away the sand from under his house. It will crash to the ground because its foundation has been washed away. When Jesus finished teaching these parables, the crowds were amazed at what he had said. They had never heard anyone talk about God and sound so sure about what he was saying. Of course, we know that Jesus is no ordinary man, he is also the son of God. The warnings Jesus gave the crowd are written in the Bible for us too. We need to build our house, our life on the rock. That means we need to put our trust in Jesus, the rock of our salvation. Jesus warned people that not everyone goes to heaven. Even if we try really, really hard to be good, one sin ruins our perfect record and makes us God's enemies. And no one can be that good. No one but Jesus. Jesus said that only those who do his father's will go to heaven. God the father sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for all the sinful things we do. If we trust in God, the father's plan, we are doing the father's will. 
that is building your house on a rock. All right. So I have a couple questions for you to think about, okay? So um, if you, you think about those builders, okay? Do you remember what they, what Jesus taught in the parable? That one of them built the, his house on a rock and the other one built his house on a sand, okay? So which one of those was built on a stronger foundation? Do you remember? Hmm. Remember that squishy sand? Not the sand, right? The rock was a strong, stronger foundation, okay? And what would it mean? What is that rock? If you're building your house on the rock, what does that mean? Great. Building your house on the rock means that you're building your house on, on Jesus. You're building your life by trusting what Jesus says and by loving Jesus and by following him and trying to obey him. Okay. And so that that trust in Jesus and that love, love for Jesus, that is what gives our life purpose. And that is what um, gives our life a, a strong foundation, okay? And what does it mean if we build our, our house on the sand? Remember that? We build our house on the sand, then we're trusting things that aren't Jesus to give our life purpose. Okay, so that might be like if we want to trust money or if we really mostly care about getting a new toy or about, I don't know, what do you think, huh? Something like that, okay? And so it's important that we, that we remember that Jesus is the only foundation that lasts, okay? Um, and that we can trust him, that God's love will always be a part of, of, of our lives and that God is always trustworthy. Um, hard times come for everyone. Um, both, of the, both the house that was built on the sand and the house that was built on the rock, they both had a storm, right? So hard times come for everyone. Um, but we can trust that Jesus will be a firm foundation for us no matter what happens, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to be a little silly. There's a song that I think you guys might know that's about this parallel parable, excuse me. And so we're going to try to sing this, okay? So you're going to have to excuse me because I don't know. <clears throat> I, I'm not the best singer, okay? But you can um, you can follow along with me. Maybe we'll we'll try it, okay? All right, ready? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down and the waves came up. The rain came down and the waves came up. The rain came down and the waves came up and the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand and the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down and the waves came up. The rain came down and the waves came up. The rain came down and the waves came up and the house on the sand went splat. All right, let's say a prayer, okay? Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time that we can have together. And we thank you for this reminder that you are the true foundation for our lives. Um, help us to remember that every day this coming week and help us to learn to trust and obey you even more every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.